CD-ROM drive, a sound card, a data or ribbon cable, an audio cable, a set of stereo speakers, a microphone, headphones. First, make sure that you have turned off the computer and any related peripherals like a monitor or printer. Next, disconnect all cables from the computer. It is very important that the power cable, which supplies the computer with power, is disconnected prior to opening up the computer. You may want to label the cables as you take them off so that you will remember where they went when you reconnect them. Now you will need to take off the cover of your computer. To do this, you will need to locate the screws that hold the case to the chassis. These are usually found in the back of your computer. Unfortunately, every computer is different and the placement of the screws differ for each computer. Some have screws that require a screwdriver. Others can be taken off by hand. If you are not sure which screws need to be taken off, please consult the owner's manual of your computer. Make sure you put the screws someplace where you can find them easily after you are finished. With the screws off, gently slide the computer case off the computer. Do not jerk or yank the cover. It may get caught on some cabling inside the computer and result in damage. A warning, do not touch anything inside the computer that you are not asked to touch during this video. Please discharge any static electricity. This can be done by touching any non-painted part of the computer's power supply. The power supply is a large metal box usually located at the back of the computer where the power cord plugs into. If this is the first time you are looking at the inside of your computer, it may look very complicated and confusing. Just take a minute and familiarize yourself with what it looks like. And don't worry, the only area we are really concerned with is this. These are called expansion slots. They are called that because you use them to add cards that expand your computer's capability. Select an expansion slot that has two connectors in a row. This is called a 16-bit expansion slot. Locate the slot cover that is associated with the expansion slot you chose. This slot cover will need to be taken off. Using your screwdriver, take off the screw that is holding the slot cover in place and slide the cover out. Once again, discharge any static electricity that may have developed by touching a non-painted surface of the power supply. You are now ready to install your sound card. Gently take the sound card out of its protective anti-static bag. Remember to always hold the card by its edges and never bend or twist it. Carefully place the connectors of the sound card into the expansion slot. Now gently push the sound card into the connector. Be careful not to bend the sound card. It may just slide right in or it may need to be pushed into place. Now screw the bracket into the computer chassis using the same screw and screw hole that was used to hold the slot cover in place. This will ensure that the sound card stays firmly attached. A drive bay is the area, or bay, that holds a drive. It may be used to hold a floppy drive, hard drive, CD-ROM drive, or other device. You will usually find a vacant drive bay near the floppy drive. Once you have identified a vacant drive bay, you will need to take the faceplate off. Since every computer is different, you may need to consult your computer's owner's manual to see how this is done. Many faceplates will simply snap off, however some will need to be unscrewed. If there is another metal bracket blocking the entrance to the drive bay, take this off as well. Now we will connect the cables to the CD-ROM drive before we put it into the drive bay. 
The two cables we will be connecting are the ribbon or data cable and the audio cable. The audio cable is the smaller of the two cables. It does not matter which end you connect to the CD-ROM drive, but it is important that it be put on the correct way. It can be installed only one way, so do not force it. If you are having trouble sliding it onto the connectors, then turn it upside down and try again. The data cable is the larger cable with 40 holes in each of its connectors. It does not matter which end you connect to the CD-ROM drive, however, the connector fits into the drive and eventually the sound card only one way. Do not force it. If the cable is not easily sliding into the connector, then turn it upside down and try again. You are now ready to insert the CD-ROM drive into the drive bay. First, pull the cables through, and then slide the drive in from the front of the computer. Push it in until it is flush with the computer face. Now, using the screws that came with your multimedia kit, secure the drive to the computer chassis. You will find holes on the side of the computer chassis that will align with the holes in the CD-ROM drive. Gently screw the chassis to the drive. Do not screw it too tightly, just enough to hold the drive firmly in place. Now, with the drive securely in place, locate an available connecting cable coming from the power supply inside your computer. It usually looks like an opaque white connector with four pins. Connect the power supply to the CD-ROM drive. It will only fit one way, so if you are having trouble, turn the power supply cable around. You will now need to connect the data and audio cable to the sound card. Before you do, please take a look at your sound card. You will note that there are more than one connectors for the data and audio cable. We have put little arrows on the card that will point to the correct data and audio connector. First, connect the data cable to its connector on the sound card. Once again, be sure that you do not force the cable on. If it is not sliding on, then turn it around. Next, Connect the audio cable to its connector, making sure that it is not being forced. Finally, check all the connections and make sure that everything is securely in place. Also make sure that the cables are well inside your computer so they are not damaged when the cover is put back on. Start by gently sliding the cover back on making sure that you are not pulling any cables. Secure the cover in place by replacing the screws you have taken off. Now, connect the speakers or microphone to the sound card in the hole marked speaker. Okay, you are almost done. All that's left is to reconnect all the cabling and turn the computer back on.